Hello and welcome to another video. In this video I want to talk about Ronnie Hart and in particular Ronnie Hart's statement. I did have this video up before but it was a text-to-speech version and it did sound a bit weird so I thought I would redo the video again. Ronnie Hart is quite interesting in the Cray story. He was a distant cousin of theirs. I think that was on their mother Violet's side. But he did literally come off the street one day and knock at the door at 178 Valance Road and apparently he said, Hello, I'm your cousin and I want to join your gang. According to Reggie Cray, they'd done some checks on him to find out if he was family and he passed them. But for Reggie to do those checks to see if he was family, Ronnie Hart must have been a very, very distant cousin. Even though he was the twins cousin, Reg said he had a habit of calling both the twins uncle. I will read through Ronnie Hart's statement now. The statement was given on the 16th of October 1968 and it describes the aftermath after the Jack McVitie murder which happened in October 1967. The statement picks up after the murder and Ronnie Hart has just parked his car outside a friend of the Cray family's Harry Hopwood's flat. I parked the car outside Hopwood's flat and I got out and went in the flat. Harry Hopwood answered the door, I think. I went in. I took the knife and the gun in as well. When I was in there, I washed the knife and the gun because Ronnie Cray told me to. After I washed them, I went back into the front room. The twins then both told me to pick up some clothing. Ronnie asked Harry Hopwood where to put the knife and the gun. Hopwood said he would put it in the canal. No, he said he knew a place where to put it. Harry Hopwood and I went to Ronnie's Aunt May's house in Valance Road. There we picked up some clothing. It was a complete change of clothing for two. Suits, underwear, shoes. We carried them in a case. Then we went back to Hopwood's flat. On the way to Valance Road, I had thrown the gun and the knife into the canal at Queensbridge Road. We drove along Queensbridge Road on the way when we were going in the direction of Stoke Newington from the Hackney Road. I was in the twins minivan. I was driving. I turned left after going over the bridge. We were then along the side of the canal. I drove about halfway the length of the street before stopping. There I threw the knife and the gun into the canal. They were still wrapped up in a tea towel. See Exhibit 4, Photograph 2. I recognise the scene here. Queensbridge Road is at the far end. The bridge shown is a bridge in Queensbridge Road, which I have mentioned. The place where I drove and stopped is visible in the photograph. I stopped by what is shown in the photograph. The first tree on the right, past the first lamppost on the right. The knife was a carving knife or bread knife. I had seen Bender with the knife in the Regency Club. It was the same knife. I would be able to identify the gun if I saw it. I see the gun now, Exhibit 7. As shown to me now, it is in various pieces. I don't really actually recognise this one, but it's the same size if it was put together. After I had done that, I went on to Valance Road and then back to Hopwood's flat. When I got back to Hopwood's flat, Ronald and Reginald Cray were there. They were having a bath. I saw Reggie in the bath. I washed his hair because he asked me to. He couldn't do it himself because he had a cut hand. I think they bandaged it up at the flat before they had a bath. They had taken off their clothing and laid it in a pile on the floor. When I got back, they told me to take off my clothing. I did so. I got some fresh clothes off Harry Hopwood. I put the clothes I took off in a case and the clothes the craze took off were also put in a case. I can't remember if it was the same case that I had used to bring fresh clothes from Valance Road. The next thing was Ronnie Cray told Harry Hopwood to burn all the paper money. That is to say, pound notes and ten shilling notes, which all came from the twins' pockets. Hopwood burned the money. I was with him when he did it. He washed all the ashes that remained down the sink. I had to wash all the Cray's watches, rings and jewellery. Ronnie told me to do it, and I did it. The next thing that happened was Ronnie told Harry Hopwood to get rid of the jewellery. He said he wouldn't get rid of it, but he would mind it for them. The clothing which had been taken off and put in a case was to be taken away by a man named Percy. 
Harry Hopwood suggested that. I didn't see the case taken away. At about that time, Ronnie Bender came to the flat. When he arrived, he said that he had got rid of the body. He said, over the water. I took that to mean over the other side of the Thames, on the south side. When Bender said that, the people present were Reggie, Ronnie and myself. I'm not sure if Harry Hopwood was in the room, he may have been. Ronnie Cray was a bit annoyed that Bender had left it over there. He said, you shouldn't have done it. He said, it's not right just to dump it over there like that. Bender said it was the best thing he could do. After that, Ronnie said, we have to get in touch with Freddy and let him know it's over there. Reggie asked Ronnie how he was going to get in touch with Freddy. Ronnie Cray said, we have to do it through Charlie. They sent Harry Hopwood to phone Charlie. Hopwood left the flat. I'm not sure whether Bender remained there. I think the next thing that happened was that Charlie arrived. Charlie Cray, that is. When he arrived, he wanted to know what was going on. I can't remember what time it was when Charlie Cray arrived. Ronnie Cray told Charlie, he's just done McVitie, meaning Reggie, and that they would have to get in touch with Freddie and let him know that Bender had left the body over there. I didn't hear everything that was said between Charlie Cray and his brothers at this time. I might have been making a cup of tea or something. I might have been out of the room. Tommy Cowley came to the flat while Charlie was there. I don't know why he came. I don't know how long Charlie Cray was there in the flat. Not long. When he left, he told me to follow him in the Mini. This was to take the Mini to be washed. That's what we had to do because it had Reggie's blood in it. It was said by one of the twins in the flat that we had to get rid of the Mini. I did follow Charlie Cray. In the Mini, he was driving a blue 1800. We went to the Prince of Wales. When we got there, Charlie knocked at the door and Freddie opened the window upstairs and looked out. I see him in court here today. Witness indicates Freddie Foreman. Charlie said, it's me. Fred said he would come down in a minute. He did come down. I heard Charlie say the van had to be put out the way. I mean the mini car. This was the mini car I had driven from Everham Road to Hopwood's flat. Freddie told me to put the mini behind an old car opposite the pub. He pointed out to me where that was. I put the mini there. I left the keys in there and then we left. I mean Charlie Cray and me. We were both then in the same car. We went back to Hopwood's flat. I don't remember what happened when we got there. Whether Charlie Cray went into the flat or whether he simply dropped me off. I went into Hopwood's flat then. Ronald and Reginald Cray were still there. I don't remember when or how they left. I don't remember whether or not they left before me. Ronnie Bender suggested the Cray twins should stay with a friend of his. It was in Cubit House at Millwall. I left Hopwood's flat with Ronnie Bender and his brother in a car. I went to Allerton Road in Stoke Newington. That's where I was living at the time. Bender's brother was driving the car and he dropped me off at my home. I don't remember what time I was dropped off but it was getting light then. In the afternoon I went to the Stowe Club in Walthamstow. Ronnie and Reggie Cray were there, and Scotch Jack and Ian, and I, and Bender, and Tommy Brown. One of the twins told Tommy Brown what had happened the night before, and then they said, is there anyone in the club that can get some wallpaper for redecorating a flat where it happened? Tommy Brown said he would send his brother to get the wallpaper. I saw his brother. Tom Brown called his brother up, and then there was another oldish fellow there as well. It was one of these two that got the wallpaper and the brushes to put it on with. I saw the wallpaper and the brushes after they had got them. They had a receipt for them. He wanted to give the receipt to Ronnie Cray, but Ronnie Cray said he didn't want it. Nothing else was said about the receipt by anybody. I don't think anything else was said about the flat. They said they would have to strip it all off, carpets and furniture. Tommy Brown's brother was to pick up the furniture in his van and burn it. Ronnie told Tommy Brown's brother to do this. Ronnie Cray that is. Brown's brother followed me to the flat. He didn't know where it was and I had to show him. I don't remember anything else that was said in the Stowe Club about these matters. I remember a party at a flat of a girl called Sally in Teesdale Street months after these events. 
I went to fetch Freddy Foreman and to take him to the party. Charlie went with me. Charlie Cray, that is. I went into the public house. There was a conversation between Charles Cray and Foreman about the matters I have been speaking of. I remember that Foreman said to Charlie Cray that when the body was taken from the car, it had a horrible film over it. I don't remember anything else. I don't remember any more of that conversation. Foreman shouts at the witness from the dock, You liar! Five defendants shout at the witness, both Lambrianos, Ronnie Bender and Foreman. I went from the public house to the party. Charles Cray stayed at the pub. I believe Charles Cray came later to the party. Magistrate warns Ronald Cray for shouting at the witness in a threatening manner. He's a known liar in the East End. Foreman came to the party in Teasdale Street. I heard Reginald Cray talking to Foreman. He said he had punched McVitie in the chest because he had been told it would stop the blood. I don't remember any more about the conversation. Immediately after McVitie was killed, Ronnie and Reggie Cray lived at Tommy Brown's flat in Bruce Grove in Tottenham. Neither of them said anything to me when I was there. I was still friendly with Vicky, to whom I have referred. At some time, I stopped taking her out. That was because Ronnie Cray had told me, while I was driving along in a car, that if any of the girls said anything, they would be got rid of. He said about Carol, if she said anything, we'll have her done. And Vicky, if she said anything, she would be done as well. This conversation took place in the mini that I have referred to. Ronnie Hart giving evidence is the ultimate betrayal and worst out of any of the others that gave evidence and statements. It was said he was told to take the rap for the McVitie murder but I really don't know about that. I'm sure that there is some truth in people having to take the rap for some things but out of all the members of the firm would they ask their own cousin family member to take the rap for a murder when they know that he didn't do it he would be looking at life in prison there was plenty of other members that were loyal to the twins at the time or seemed to be loyal people like Tony Lambriano, Connie Whitehead I just can't see them asking Hart to take it for the murder of Jack McVitie with him being a distant cousin even though he was very distant he was still family it could be true that the twins did ask members of the firm to take the rap for the murders like Albert Donoghue and Scotch Jack Dixon but we are told this by them they are the ones that grasped of course this could all be made up to justify them grassing regardless of if it's true or not I find it hard to really believe that the twins would want to drop Ronnie Hart in it a family member albeit a distant one the twins were quite family people most people in the east end at the time and before then were quite family in in orientated they had good family values so i'm not sure the twins would want to drop ronnie hart in it with a murder i'm sure the twins would be loyal to their family and they would expect it in return with Ronnie Hart giving evidence in court, I can see it being quite a sway with the jury. It puts a seed in the jury's head. If their own family can grasp and are given evidence against them, then it must be true. I'm sure it was brought up at the trial that Ronnie Hart was their cousin. Another person in the statement also that gave evidence against the twins was Harry Hopwood. He was a long-time friend of the twins and their father, Charlie Cray Sr., he was probably treated as family, he had known them for so long. It's quite grotesque the amount of people that gave evidence against the twins. Others like Limehouse Willie had also known the Cray family for a very long time and is seen in pictures with the twins' mother and father, Charlie and Violet. They enjoyed the good times with the twins and then they bailed out when the seas got rough and they bailed out by giving evidence against the twins. So that was the statement of Ronnie Hart given on the 16th of October 1968. Going by the outburst of Ronnie Cray and other members of the firm in the statement, it was given in open court. So it has to be committal proceedings, I would assume. I knew they went 
July 1968 with committal proceedings but I'm not sure how the legal system worked back then maybe there was a few committal proceedings so that's about it I know people who've watched the channel before will have heard this statement as I've done the text to speech version in the past but I thought it would be better with me reading it out and yeah just more of a better video so I hope you've enjoyed it and I will see you again in the next video thank you all of a sudden you've got their own cousin Ronnie Hart done the right grass in any way he's told them exactly what's happened and about half a dozen more of the so-called heavyweights on the firm have all grasped one another and grasped the twins.